Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey, you live here in Pittsburgh? Uh, no, actually, I'm here. Bye bye. Hey, folks. So, what's going on here? Why is Shell, according to numerous media reports, suddenly departing South Africa after more than a century in business there? Well, first things first. Apparently, this is not an accurate story. Business Day reports that Shell is not exiting South Africa. The London-based company is just disposing of its non-core retail business, which includes, of course, its petrol stations. This is what is known as the downstream side in the energy business. Now, Shell's upstream business includes crude oil and natural gas exploration and extraction. Business Day claims that Shell intends to retain the upstream portion of its South Africa portfolio. So that would mean that it's not leaving South Africa, not entirely. Uh, though this makes one ponder, given the environmental activists have proved successful with lawfare in stopping Shell's seismic testing off the South Coast. Since that court decision, Shell has asked the courts overturn the decision to halt its exploration for oil and gas along the Wild Coast. Now, that appeal may be heard later this year. If one listens to the Tebe Investment Corporation and an unidentified shareholder, this is the great Dutch heist. Now, that's strange. Although... Royal Dutch Shell began in the Netherlands. Shell is listed in London, not in Amsterdam. So it's not a Dutch company, so to speak. Tebe reportedly claims that it contacted Shell back in 2022, indicating that Tebe wanted to divest their 28% share in Shell's downstream operations in South Africa. Basically, Shell's South Africa-based refining capacity, and it's approximately 600 to 1,000 petrol stations around South Africa. Now, I say 600 to 1,000 because the media reports are all over the place. Some say six, some say seven, some say 1,000 petrol stations. I don't know the current number of Shell-affiliated petrol stations in South Africa. Now, one of South Africa's Shell South Africa's downstream main assets was South Africa's largest refinery, SAFPREF. Now, SAPREF is located in Durban, but it's not been in operation since 2022 when Shell and its joint venture partner, BP, formerly known as British Petroleum, decided on a spending freeze and to halt the company's operations. Flooding back in that same year from those massive floods in KwaZulu-Natal severely damaged the plant. This contributed to the decision to shut the factory down, or the refinery, I should say. SAPREF had a refining capacity of 180,000 barrels per day before it was closed. And that supplied about 35% of South Africa's entire refining capacity. ANC policymaking and infrastructure neglect have crippled refining capacity in South Africa, driving up fuel cost. Today, South Africa is a net importer of refined petroleum products. The closures of SAPREF and the country's second large refining, NREF, have been devastating. NREF and SAPREF, both located in Durban. Shell Downstream South Africa, or SDSA, was formed after Shell South Africa and Black Empowerment Company, Tebe Investment Corporation, or TIC, agreed a decade ago to merge Shell South Africa marketing and Shell South Africa refining businesses. Tebe wound up with a 28% equity stake. Funny that number. 30 seems to be the magic number to shake down corporations and hand equity to privileged Black elites under BE. Now, at its current share value, the parent company, Shell PLC, listed in London, is trading for $73.02 for U.S. investors who purchase American Depository Receipts, or ADRs. That puts Shell's valuation north of $233 billion. <laughs> no wonder Tebe wants to cash out. It appears Tebe's leadership presumes that its 28% stake in the downstream portion of Shell's portfolio in South Africa is worth a lot of money. It's not. It's no secret to industry analysts that downstream operations have been an anchor on Shell earnings. The company just reported first quarter revenue had declined nearly $15 billion with drops in every biggest business segment, save the upstream portion, which is what they want to focus on. $15 billion drop in earnings year over year. Now that results to a 19.8% decline in earnings. With the stock under pressure, Shell announced a $3.5 billion share buyback. Now, those are common shares, not the Tebe investment. And I'm sure that that kind of irritates the Tebe investors. Now, Shell appears to be making a business decision. Tebe appears to be aggrieved, assuming that the downstream business in South Africa has value. So who's telling us the truth? The media? Probably not. Reports on this story have been all over the place. Shell? Well, possibly, and more likely, they probably are telling us the truth. Now, a prudent investor can quickly suss out that situation. Tebe, are they telling us the truth? Probably not. You see, there certainly appears to be much more to the story than Shell screwing over Tebe. Tebe is a BEE company. Until this week, Tebe Investments was ostensibly an independent company. 
But that all changed as the Bato Bato Trust just bought a majority stake in Tebe yesterday, rising their value from 46.79% of the equity of shares to a 70% stake or outright ownership on May 6th. So what's the relationship between Tebe and the Bato Bato Trust? Although the Bato Bato Trust, headed by Kenny Fila, is purportedly run independently of the African National Congress by a board of trustees, its ties to the ANC run very deeply. What you talking about, huh? <laughs> In 1992, it was Nelson Mandela and Walter Sisuslu who set up the Bato Bato Trust, principally as a trust to benefit the African National Congress, although this isn't stated in the trustee. Also, back in 1992, the BBP, or Bato Bato Trust, funded the founding of Tebe with 100,000 Rand in seed capital to create an investment vehicle to provide income for the trust. Didn't seem bad, unless you pay attention to events subsequently. In the quarter from October to December of 2021, when the South African municipal elections occurred, the ANC received nearly 22 million in donations. Not bad, but 66% of that money, or 15 million Rand, came from the Bato Bato Trust. <laughs> which was founded and owned nearly half of Tebe Investment at the time, and as of this week, owns Tebe outright, which means the ANC-linked Batu Batu Trust owns 28% of the downstream Shell South Africa business in a country where the ANC government regulates the price of fuels. Hmm, kind of a self-licking lollipop there, isn't it? Now, that business no longer has a refinery in operation, making it far less valuable. Now, Shell's virtually worthless downstream business is what Tebe wants to sell back to Shell, the 28%. Shell does not want that share, and it's easy to see why. There's no money to be made there. But the rot goes deeper than just a shakedown. When you see that the ANC government has its dirty fingers all over this story, it suddenly makes a lot of sense why Minerals Minister Gwede Montasha came out so strongly in support of Shell's seismic testing off the Wild Coast back in September of 2022. Mantasha lashed out at environmental groups and said opposition to the exploration was a special type of apartheid and colonialism, which at the time I found a bit shocking to hear those terms. But I did agree that stopping Shell from doing seismic testing was short-sighted and ignorant. But he went further. And now we understand why Gwede Mantasha was so much on board with criticizing environmentalists about Shell's offshore seismic testing. You see the ANC owns 28% of Shell's downstream business in South Africa through the Batu Batu Trust, which now owns a majority share of the Tebe Investment Corporation. So what's at work here? Is the African National Congress desperate for cash trying to shake down Shell, a company which the ANC owns? Well, at least that magical 28% of the downstream South African business. Now, the thing is that that's a token amount of the total value of Shell's global operations. But what's at work here? Is the ANC distorting reality here? Are they trying to sell shares to get a quick payoff because they need money for an election? What's going on here? Well, you decide. Thanks a lot, folks. And there you have it. What's really going on? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Thanks for your patronage. Cheers.